Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Explore Traveler podcast. My name is John Gentry, and I'm here to give you 15 minutes of information. Um, sometimes it'll be longer, but I think for the next couple of podcasts, it's going to be like 15 minutes in length. And today, we're going to talk about White Sands National Monument. Now, those of you that follow the channel more closely, you'll notice um, when it comes to videos, I made a video of it. It's also posted on the article that's at the top of the website as of right now. It's still pretty new. And also keep in mind that we have a search function. I know most of you look at our website now via the mobile So there is a search function. You can type in a city, you can type in a country, and it'll basically pull up. And don't forget the top and the menus, we've got kind of things broken down by region as well. And so please uh, don't forget to like and share wherever you're seeing this, whether you're seeing this on Spreaker or listening to us on YouTube. Um, Wherever you are, please um, like and share our content. We do this uh, basically for free. And sometimes I've had some people say, hey, yeah, but you monetize your videos on YouTube. No, we do not. That is YouTube monetizing our videos for YouTube. We have nothing to do with that. It's something they started doing this year. And so we apologize. We have no control over what they put on there. As long as we put stuff on YouTube, I guess they're going to do that. And uh, the only thing we get out of it is, you know, basically storage at this point. We are moving towards finding a way where we can store our videos and have more control, maybe through the website itself. Um, However, that is not something that we've done right now because we don't have enough um, income coming from the website to pay for this kind of infrastructure. So for now, we will put up with it. Okay, so let's get started. White Sands National Monument. It's in New Mexico. It's to the south and it basically is accessible off of Interstate 25. And then there's another highway you got to kind of go from there. It is a national monument, not a national park. Um, is there a difference between the two? I'm sure technically there is, but I have no idea how the National Forest Service determines that. A lot of visitors go there. It's unique in the sense that you have these white sand dunes in the middle of the desert. They just, it's like beach sand, but there's no beach. So it's really odd. It's an unusual phenomenon, and we don't know, we actually don't even know why it happened. Um, I plan on going back at some point and trying to figure out if scientists understand why there is so much white sand there that's i mean you would think this was in in indonesia or the philippines but it is not so the hours of this park are from 7 a.m to 9 p.m they lock the gates at nine so make sure to be out of the park you don't want to get stuck in there and locked in there i mean i'm sure they let you out if they see you there's a visitor center it's open from 9 a.m to 6 (coughs) p.m right now it's not very useful because they're still having some COVID regulations. And because of that, it's like, you got to wait. And it's just, it's hard. I mean, it's like sometimes there's only one person's allowed in there because they're by themselves. Or if you're a family of three, then you all three can go in at a time. And okay, so entry fees. If you don't have any of the park passes, then it's approximately $25 per vehicle. So if you got four, five, six people in the vehicle, should be twenty-five bucks. Now I mentioned on the website that there is these passes, and um, those of us that are military veterans, we can get what used to be called, I think it's like the American, the Beautiful Pass. And elderly used to be able to purchase this at a very steep discount, and veterans, um, especially disabled veterans, could get this for free. Now I have one of these passes that I got, uh, man, I don't know how many long, how many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, back after I was in military service. So I, I basically can go in for free, and I use it quite often. Um, in the last 30 days, I have used it to access Bandelier National Forest, White Sands National Monument, 
Carl's Bay and Canyon National Park. And uh, it's very, very useful and it has very strong cost savings. Sometimes if you want to camp, it'll also give you a discount as well. Although it's usually so cheap, it's like 10 bucks. But I, I don't know if it goes down to free or if it's just 50%. I haven't actually checked recently. Uh, so one of the things that people like to do there is they like to go sledding. And so you can rent sleds, climb to the top of the sand dunes, and slide down like you would on snow. Except it's, I wouldn't call it hot, because it's not hot like Southeast Asia. But you are in a desert, but you're high altitude, so that also gives you some a little bit of a, a coolness just because of that. So if you go there, consider going sledding or hiking. I mean, I went on some treks, and they have trails that are, it's not a normal trail because the sand's always moving. And so you have to follow these markers. And the markers basically enable you to kind of stay on, on, on track. Now, if you're like me, I'm kind of an adventure enthusiast, so I always go off track. If I see something interesting, I'm kind of going for it unless I think it's going to harm nature, and then I'll leave it alone. And so I hiked to the top of a lot of these sand dunes. I got some video, and I have some photos, and I'm continually updating uh, the website weekly, right? Sometimes daily. And so check us out, exploretraveler.com. And the White Sands National Monument is there for you to view. Um, so my, my personal experience is, you know, I, I arrived there. I stopped at the visitor center. There was a nice, you know, woman there. Kind of went in and took a look around. I think I bought a hat. Um, if you're going to go, you need to have your supplies. It gets hot. It's windy and it's very dry. Your clothing should cover your bare skin especially if you have very sensitive skin in nature. And a lot of people think, oh, well, they're darker, so they don't get sunburn. Wrong. Everybody gets sunburn. Some of us are more sensitive to it than others. But please, if you don't go out in the sun much, I don't care where you are from in this world, please be careful to protect your skin for the future. I don't want anybody to have any kind of skin cancer, myself included. Have a hat. Have a supply of water and uh, ensure that you have comfortable clothing for walking around. Uh, I mean, for a lot of people of European descent, you probably should have some sort of longer pants or maybe knickers on. Now, I'm not the best example because I do like walking around sometimes in shorts. But, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. And you are going to get sand in your shoes, so make sure you can clean your, your shoes up very easily. And so on our website, you're going to see this new article. You're going to see the video. I got links to the National Forest Service. And I also have, within the video, I added some, some interesting content. So not only did I talk about this little adventure that I had, I also basically do a drive out. So I, it just sort of, I just kind of came up with it at the last minute. And so I was there sitting in this little parking area and I thought, well, you know, what if people want to see what it looks like when you're like driving in or driving out? So I put my video camera on the uh, dashboard and I slowly drove out of the park and I videotaped it and I added it. It's at the end of the video. And yeah, you might think it kind of seems a little out of place and I apologize because it was spontaneous. But I did put that in there, and I think it'll give you a really good understanding. And I drive all the way out, and you can see the environment change from white sand dunes to just normal desert. You can see some of the the, the hills in the uh, out in the uh, you know kind of viewing out far away, the mountains and stuff. And then I just pull up in front of the visitor center, and you'll get to see what that looks like when you get there as well. So if you're in New Mexico or you're in the southwest of the United States consider visiting White Sands National Monument. Now, if you're going to go to White Sands, you got to go to Carlsbad Caverns. And so I went there recently as well, and I videotaped all the way into the park, through the museum, down until basically it's getting too dark for me to have the camera. And then at that point, I took some pictures 
And those pictures kind of also show a lot of the stagnolites and it kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you can see. These videos are most of the time less than 30 minutes, sometimes less than 25 minutes. They're not meant to be like a detail oriented documentary of two hours. It's just meant for you to be able to go on there for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes to a half hour. And just get a general idea of what this site has. And I try to like cover whether it's trails or the caverns. Just a nice general overview. So you can go, wow, okay, I think I can do that. Now, Cowersboro Caverns has an elevator. So if you are disabled or you don't think you're physically fit to walk down. And it took me about 45 minutes to an hour. And I pretty much walked nonstop got a good calf workout because you're going downhill the whole time but it was uh it's very comfortable i mean you're just cool i mean you're exercising and i'm i'm getting older now not nearly in as great a shape as i was you know 20 years ago when i was still bringing you content these days you know i mean i'm slowing down as you know as i age but i'm still pretty good i i love it and i can walk down with the young people so so far, so good. And so that's another great place. Now, in between driving, whether you're driving to White Sands or from White Sands, you're most likely going to, you know, plot into your GPS and you're going to see the north part of the Lincoln National Forest. And it's a really nice view. I mean, you're going to kind of drive through different kinds of high desert, low desert, and in between there's some pine forests. And it's actually quite unusually green and cool because it's such high desert or it's such high elevation where the, the top of this national park is that it's just unusually comfortable. It was like 70 degrees and everywhere else it was like 100. So that was great. And I recommend you take that drive. Enjoy it. There is camping in the vicinities of both locations, um, whether you're camping on a private like KOA campground, or you're just going through something through the federal BLM or National Forest, there's something there for everyone. So I think that's going to be it for now. I am going to try to continue to add more small podcasts here of the different trips I do. And I will add links within this um this particular podcast, a link to the White Sands National Monument article that gives you additional information, links, where you can find more stuff to plan your trip. So thank you very much. Please like and share wherever you are listening to this from. And don't forget to visit exploretraveler.com.